Can you work, have a wage income coming in, and collect Social Security at the same time? And if you do, will your benefits be reduced? Well, the answers are yes, maybe, and no. Three answers to one question. And in today's show, we're going to go through all of those answers. We're going to talk about if and when your benefits would be reduced, how you get the deductions back, and then also we're going to talk about four key ingredients to help you determine when to take Social Security. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast with Scott Searens, teaching you how to thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Welcome to the Retirement Show, all about your life, your money, and today we're actually going to talk about your Social Security. So recently I was doing a uh, Social Security seminar, and I will say a topic that's often misunderstood is, can I work and collect Social Security? Which then leads to the next question is, will my Social Security be reduced if I do work? Well, short answer to the first question, can I work and collect Social Security, is yes. Will my Social Security be reduced if I work? Well, the answer to that is yes, maybe, no, and that's what we're going to talk about today, the deductions to Social Security if you are working and collecting Social Security, when those deductions do and do not apply. And then stick around to the end because I'm going to talk about the four key ingredients of what you should consider, the ingredients that you should consider um, before claiming your Social Security or the four ingredients in deciding what your claim date should be. Now, another resource for you in regards to Social Security, if you haven't yet, check out our YouTube channel. That's Siren's Financial Group on YouTube. It's S-I-E-R-E-N-S, Siren's Financial Group. We have a video on there that is when to take Social Security, the three uncommon factors that you want to consider. So go to YouTube, check out our YouTube channel. Hey, if you enjoy the, the video, there's plenty more videos coming out. So subscribe while you're there. Um, that helps the whole YouTube algorithm, says that people like our channel and helps us continue to grow as well. So we really appreciate if you want to subscribe while you're there. And as I mentioned, a uh, actually there's a few videos out there in regards to Social Security, but one of the most recent one, ones that we did is when to take it, three uncommon factors to consider. So today's topic, like I said, often very misunderstood. And as I was giving the Social Security class, I saw that there was a lot of questions in regards to this, this topic of can I work and collect Social Security? And then if I do, Will my Social Security benefits be reduced because I'm working? And as I had mentioned, the the first answer is yes. You can work and collect Social Security at the same time. However, your benefits could potentially be reduced depending on when you started each, I'll say, scenario here. And so I thought today we can just walk through the story of hypothetical Laura, okay? And we're going to say Laura, her full retirement age. Now, in Social Security, there's like a couple key phrases. One is full retirement age, and the other is primary insurance amount. Now, today we're not necessarily worried about primary insurance amount, but basically full retirement age, that's the age in which you can collect your full Social Security. That's all based upon when you were born. So for some people, based on when they were born, it might be age 67. For others, it might be 66 and six months or 66 and eight months. But based on when you were born, that determines your full retirement age where you can get your full Social Security benefit. Now, let's just say in our story here, Laura, um, Laura is going to turn full retirement age in October of 2024. So as we're recording this here and it publishing it, uh, this will come out in June of 2023. So we're going to just kind of use where we're at in time to help describe this whole scenario. So full retirement age, October of 2024. We're currently in 2023. Okay. Now there's three periods of time, all with different impacts to Laura and working and social security. So three periods of time. The first period of time to understand is prior to the year of full retirement age. So we said Laura turns full retirement age in 2024. So this first period of time would be prior to the year of full retirement age. So that would mean 2023, 2022, 2021, anything 2023 or prior is the first period of time that we need to be aware of. 
Now the second period of time is the year of full retirement age. Now we said her full retirement age is October of 2024. So the second period of time is the year of full retirement age up to the month of full retirement age. So the second period of time here would be January of 2024 through September 31st of 2024. And then the final period of time that we'll talk about today is at full retirement age and after. So that would be October 2024 and after. Okay, now let's kind of dive into these different periods of time and what it means if you're working and taking Social Security. Okay, so the first period of time prior to the year of full retirement age. So in our example, again, Laura's full retirement age is 2024. So this would be any year that's 2023 or before. The rule here is $1 of benefits is deducted from your Social Security benefit for every $2 of earnings over $21,240. Let's just say that Laura's going to start collecting Social Security in January of 2023, or she did start collecting January of 2023, and the amount that she's going to get for the year is $30,000. We're going to keep, keep our numbers simple today. Okay, so Laura's working, and her wage income now for 2023 is going to be $31,240. $31,240. Well, back to our rule, $1 of benefits is deducted from your Social Security benefit for every $2 of earnings over $21,240. Well, we said that she's going to make $31,240. That's $10,000 over the wage earnings limit. And so $1 benefits deducted for every $2 of earnings, basically we can take that times 50%. And what that means is that she will have then a $5,000 deduction from her Social Security. So let me just recap this. Laura's, it's 2023, and the year prior to her full retirement age, she is taking Social Security. She's going to make $30,000 a year in Social Security. She's also still working. This year, she's going to make $31,240. It's $10,000 over the earnings limit. We take it times 50%. And that's a $5,000 deduction from her Social Security, meaning that instead of getting $30,000 of Social Security this year, she's going to get $25,000 of Social Security this year. Now, stick around to the end. We'll discuss what happens with these deductions and whether or not you get them back. But right now, we just want to talk about the periods of time and what happens in those periods of time. Now, let's just say instead, Laura made... $15,000 for the year. She didn't make $31,240. Well, that $15,000 falls under the $21,240 earnings limit. And so then guess what? She made $15,000 plus her $30,000 of Social Security and there were no deductions to her Social Security. Okay, that's period of time number one. Like I said, stick around to the end um, because we'll talk about whether or not you get those deductions back and how you get them back. All too often I find people go, oh, I just want to stay under the earnings limit. I don't want them to deduct anything from my Social Security because they think that they will never get it back. And folks, that's not the case. You do get it back, but in a certain way. And so I'll explain that at the end of how much you get back and how that all works. Okay, let's move on to period of time number two. Oh, before I talk about that really quick, one of the common questions that we get during the class is what counts as wage income. So what will count towards that earnings limit? Let's just keep this really simple today. What counts as wage income could be W-2 income, self-employment income, bonuses, commissions, vacation pay. All of that counts as income towards or going over that earnings limit. However, things that don't count as income would be your IRA withdrawals, pensions, dividends, capital gains, those don't count as income. So that was a question. I had a, a person that was retired. They're thinking about taking Social Security early, but they were wondering about, you know, because of their IRA withdrawals, because of their dividends, because of their capital gains, would that throw them over the earnings limit? And for that particular person, if that was the income they'd have coming in, 
that would not throw them over the earnings limit. It does not count towards this calculation. Just W-2, self-employment, commissions, vacation pay, or bonuses that you have coming in. Okay, that was the first period of time. Hopefully that now um, helps you in regards to Social Security and understanding some deductions. Let's now talk about the second period of time. Now we're into 2024. Laura turns full retirement age in October of 2024, but we're at January of 2024. And as we already know, Laura's working. She's already collecting Social Security. But this period of time is a little bit different. So in our example, she's already taken Social Security. She's taken, um, she's got $30,000 a year of Social Security coming in because she started taking it in 2023. She had that deduction in 2023 based on how much she made, that $31,240. Now, Laura's going into, right, because now we're in January of 2024, she's going into period of time number two. And the way period of time number two works is in the year of full retirement age. So full retirement age, 2024, January of 2024. She's in the year full retirement age. Okay. In the year of full retirement age, $1 of benefits is deducted from your Social Security benefit for every $3 of earnings over the $56,520. See, now they've, they've changed it up in two different ways. $1 of benefits is deducted for every $3 of earnings, and it's over a new earnings limit. It used to be $21,240, and now it's going up to $56,520. And I should have said before, all of these are based on the current rules. We're in year 2023 right now, but these get updated each and every year. So you want to check with you know most recent IRS guidelines. So back to it here, second period of time. Earnings over $56,240. Well, we said that Laura, her wages, now this could be wages, self-employment, bonuses, vacation pay, her wages were $31,240. In 2024, she falls under the earnings limit. So guess what? No deduction to her social security. So she can make that $31,240 plus she'll get all $30,000 of the social security that she's collecting. However, let's just say, and, and I should say, the period of time there, this only applies to the months before her full retirement age. That's it. It only applies to the months of January through September. It doesn't apply to the months of October, November, and December. It applies to the months of January through September. Now, let's say... In January through September of 2024, Laura gets a bonus. Great year. She's having a great time at work and gets a great bonus. And her bonus puts at her total income of $65,520. I mean, heck, going from $31,240 to $65,520, that's a nice bonus, right? So she gets this bonus, $65,520. Now we have to do some math. We have to do some math based on the earnings limit because she made this money before October of 2024. So we do some math. We subtract out the $56,520. She's officially $9,000 over the earnings limit. This one, instead of taking it times 50%, this one we divide by three because we're in the same year of full retirement age. Now we divide by three and that $9,000 over divided by three would mean that she's got to take a $3,000 deduction to her Social Security. So her Social Security was going to be $30,000 coming in. Now we take a $3,000 deduction, which means that she would get $27,000 of that Social Security. Remember, that doesn't go fully away for life. We're going to talk about um, what happens to those deductions here in a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you understand. We've got period of time number one, which is the year's prior to the year of your full retirement age. Period number two, the year of your full retirement age from January to the month that you turn to the month prior to the month of full retirement age. Our example here was January through September. Period of time number three is full retirement age and after. So Laura finally gets to October of 2024. This is now when she would have, even though she took social security early, This is still considered her full retirement age from a social security standpoint. So she took it early. That was her decision. 
This is still just kind of in the social security mindset. This is still considered her full retirement age, even though she's already collecting. So we get to October 2024 and Laura's still working. She likes those bonuses that come in every once in a while. She's enjoying what she does and she still wants to work and collect social security. Well, guess what? Now, October 2024 and after, she can make as much wage income as she wants, collect as much social security as she wants, and there are no longer any deductions to her social security. So let's just use our example here. $30,000 $30,000 of social security coming in. Let's just say her wages went up. Now she's getting $50,000 of wages. Well, that's $80,000 between social security and her wages. And guess what? She gets to keep all $80,000. There are no deductions. Of course, always remember, you might have to pay taxes on your money, but there would be no social security deductions for going over so any sort of earnings limits. So, Three periods of time, three different um, thought processes. In each period of time, you could hopefully see that you could potentially have a deduction, potentially not have a deduction, or as we talked about our third period of time here, full retirement age and after, there are no deductions. You can collect as much social security as you want and earn as much as you want, and you get to keep all of it in your pocket, of course, minus taxes. So. Back to the question then, for those then that think about taking it early and they're gonna still work and they're worried about these deductions, will they get the deductions back? Let's talk about that. I see a lot of times that sometimes, you know, people will think about taking social security early or they took social security early, but then they'll take a job where they're trying to keep themselves under the social security earnings limit because I have this feeling that they think, oh, this deduction that social security takes, I'll never ever get that money back. I'll never see it back. So then what they do is they they learn, I'll say they limit their earnings potential. And folks, I never think that people should limit their earnings potential um, because of social security or something like that. So will you get these deductions back? Let's just say, uh, the answer is kind of, and it comes in a different format. So let me just, un- just let me just help you um, understand this. Let's just say that you took Social Security as early as 62, right? So let's just say your your full retirement age is age your full retirement age is age 67, and you took it at age 62. So you took Social Security 60 months early. Now, based on all of those years you're working, collecting Social Security, and you did have some deductions. Well, when they add all of those deductions up, let's just say it works out to an estimated 10 months of deductions that were withheld from your benefits. Well, then when you hit your full retirement age, Social Security will reset your benefit based on as if you had filed 50 months early rather than the 60 months early that you filed. So I'm gonna do this one more time. You took Social Security 60 months early. You were working. You were also collecting Social Security benefits. You went over the earnings limit. And every time you went over the earnings limit, they deducted money from your Social Security. Well, they're keeping track of that. They're pooling that into a bucket. And then once you hit full retirement age, they look at that bucket and they go, oh, Well, this works out to an estimated amount of about 10 months worth of benefits that were withheld. So now, once you hit, again, full retirement age, they're going to recalculate your benefit. And since there's 10 months of benefits in that bucket, they're going to recalculate your benefit and do it now as if you had filed 50 months, right? So 10 months, so 60 months is how many months you filed early minus the 10 months of benefits kind of in that bucket. And so they're gonna recalculate your benefit as if you had filed 50 months early. And so your benefit will go up, but you're going to get those, I'll I'll say you get those deductions not all in one lump sum, you're going to get them back over time based on your benefit going up at your full retirement age. Now it's not gonna go up a lot, right? It's still going to be as if you filed early, 
But hopefully that helps you understand those benefits, those deducted benefits, they don't go away forever. Um, You do get them back as an increased Social Security amount once you do hit your full retirement age. So hopefully that helps in regards to the question of will I get my benefits back. Last, I just wanted to hit on the key ingredients. I know a lot of times people are thinking about, you know, as you're thinking about probably this question here, can I work and take Social Security? You might be thinking about, well, then when should I take Social Security? And I think one of the biggest mistakes that I find is people just do a calculation based on longevity and make their Social Security decisions based on that. And my opinion is that is a big mistake. Folks, you want to factor in more than just longevity. Yes, you do want to factor in how long do you think that you might live to base when you might want to start Social Security. But a few other key parts that you want to think about are cost of living adjustments. Because once you take Social Security, that is a permanent decision. Permanent decision. There are very few take backs in regards to that decision. So just kind of look at that as a permanent decision. So once you take it, permanent decision, all your cost of living adjustments are based on that permanent decision. So let's just keep this simple. You have the ability to take um, Social Security at full retirement age. It's $2,500 a month. You instead take it at age 70 and it's $3,000 a month. Cost of living adjustments are the percentages that your Social Security goes up each and every year to help you keep up with inflation. Let's just say it's 5%. Would you rather have a 5% increase on $2,500 a month or a 5% increase on $3,000 a month? Simple math, yes, who wouldn't want the increase on the higher number? So think about cost of living adjustments. The next is survivor benefits. You want to think about that as well. If you're a couple listening to this, you only keep one of the two social securities if somebody were to pass away. You keep the higher of the two. So if you're a couple, one of you pass away, you only keep one of the two social securities and you keep the higher of the two. And the last key ingredient that I think a lot of people fail to calculate into when they take their social security is how much you've saved in your retirement savings. How much you've saved in your retirement savings. Because I see sometimes people take their social security too early, not factoring in how much they saved. And then guess what? They're having to reduce or cut their retirement lifestyle um, because they took Social Security too early. Their retirement savings wasn't enough then to fill the gap to the lifestyle that they needed. So think about how much you've saved. Calculate that into the overall factor as well. Hey, as I had mentioned earlier, If Social Security is on your mind, you're wondering when to take it, all the factors to consider, go to our YouTube channel. Again, it's Siren's Financial Group, S-I-E-R-E-N-S. Type in that. You go to our YouTube channel. Then we've got a YouTube video, when to take Social Security, three uncommon factors to consider. I also have a video out there about the five myths of Social Security that might help you out as well. If you've enjoyed this podcast, subscribe on your favorite podcast channel. That way you get notified as we're continuing to come out with new episodes each and every week to help you on subjects like Social Security, how to help keep more of your hard-earned income in your pocket versus giving it to the IRS and taxes, and maximizing your retirement income. Hey, really enjoyed today's conversation to help you enjoy life today and be financially confident about your retirement. Insurance products are offered through the insurance business Searns Financial Management, Inc. Searns Financial Group, Inc. is an investment advisory practice that offers products and services through AE Wealth Management, LLC, AEWM, a registered investment advisor. AEWM does not offer insurance products. The insurance products offered by Searns Financial Management, Inc. are not subject to investment advisor requirements. AEWM and Searns Financial Group, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as a sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Please remember that converting an employer plan account to a Roth IRA is a taxable event. Increased taxable income from the Roth IRA conversion may have several consequences including, but not limited to, a need for additional tax withholding or estimated tax payments, the loss of certain tax deductions and credits, 
and higher taxes on Social Security benefits and higher Medicare premiums. Be sure to consult with a qualified tax advisor before making any decisions regarding your IRA. Searns Financial Group, Inc. is not permitted to offer and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Searns Financial Group, Inc.